Welcome back to Jump Scare. I'm Better Be Deadly. And I'm Shad Youngblood. This week, we watched Escape Room. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes made of ticky tacky little boxes on the hillside. And they all look just the same. You want to control your life, but life isn't a science experiment. You can't contain your world forever. Try doing one thing that scares you over break, okay? Yeah. This serves as an entry voucher. For Minos Minos Escape escape Rooms. rooms. Be the the first first to escape escape our most immersive immersive room yet. yet. And win a million dollars. So, uh, when does the game start? I think this is the escape room. We should look for clues. What are we looking for here? Anything that looks like a puzzle or a code. It looks like an oven dial. That looks real. It's kind of warming up in here. Uh, excuse me. I would like our hit now, please. Well, that's creepy as hell. Is it getting hotter? How do we get out of here? It's Fahrenheit 451. Got it. about immersive. What's wrong with you? That was real. Whoa. Dumb question. Are we outside? As soon as we get this figured out, as soon as we get the hell out of here. Who would do this? They know every move that we're making. They knew everything about us. This is my hospital bed. Me too. They made these rooms for us. Have you ever seen things that weren't there before? I am not imagining this. Surviving is a choice. I want to let me out of here. That's why they chose us. And they all look just the same. Wow. That's all I have to say, period. Chad? Uh, I actually liked it a lot. <laughs> my my wow was, I was pretty surprised. Uh, once we like did some research before the film, when we saw like the trailer, uh, we saw that Adam Robital was actually the director um, of the film. And he's the one that had done the taking of Deborah Logan, which is on my top five favorite found footage films yeah it's uh incredible it just popped up out of nowhere seemingly and it was really good yeah it was really good this is his second film his third film i guess depending on where he also did insidious the last key uh he co-wrote what shall be named the worst film from the paranormal activity which is the lost the ghost dimension well, like I said, that's a studio thing. I can't really blame him for that because so many of those kind of movies get written and then they go, yeah, so we're going to keep your name on the script, but we're going to make all these terrible changes. And, Enjoy. And he, yeah, and he co-wrote it. So maybe it wasn't entirely his fault. Maybe he wrote the good stuff and someone came in and wrote the terrible stuff after him. That's true. The film has Tyler Russell, who is the... A uh, girl from Judy from Lost in Space. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that I think her name is Judy. I think so. Yeah, it's been a while since I watched that. I'm gonna name. I'm gonna name her Judy. It's about due for that to come back. Yeah, it is about due. It's been a year. It was released April. I only remember that because that was when our daughter was born, and that's when uh, we spent so much time recuperating from the delivery on the couch watching Lost in Space. Yeah, we were just sitting around watching that for a long time. So, and Insidious the Last Key, which I actually like that movie. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah, so he did a pretty good job in Escape Room. 
kind of a, a sleeper, really. I didn't really hear that many people talking about it. It probably didn't, I don't remember it, like, having a strong box office opening, which is unfortunate. I don't know if it did or not, to be honest. It might have, because I think it came out, it came out, like, in January, and usually the ones in January don't do too badly, just because there's nothing much else to compete with, you know? Yeah. Well, this film really plays on the whole like trend of escape rooms it was reminiscent to saw and what was the other film that i said when we're watching it mm, there was another film. oh uh, nerve oh yeah nerve with emma roberts kind of like you know rich people are just so rich they have nothing better to do than pin people against one another and they have to like fight for their survival kind of thing basically is the gist of the film yeah, uh, it also reminded me a little bit of uh, Cube, oh, where yeah. they have to go from one room to another, which was probably like the original escape room idea and movie. Yeah, the escape rooms in the film obviously are super elaborate, and they're actually, when you get a clue, it's not always a good thing. Yeah, people have interpreted some of the things that you thought was like, oh, they just found this clue, but no, that wasn't a good idea. Because they could, they have technically left, the spoiler alert, they could technically have left the first room without ever turning that dial. That's true. If they hadn't turned the dial, they could have just figured out that the coaster thing pushed down and got out without having to do that. Yeah, the first room basically turned into an easy bake oven. Yeah, that's on the trailer, so we're not giving too much away on that one. And they did a pretty good job. It was a mixed cast, uh, Deborah... And wow, whoa, whoa, I always fuck that shit up. Uh, she's the redhead from True Blood. So. And Daredevil. And Daredevil. And Oculus. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. always an Oculus. So, you know, as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, okay. I I grew to like you because I hated her from... Uh, True Blood. Well, yeah, I guess. I had a love-hate relationship with her character from True Blood. And... She, you know, was just one of those actresses that was like, oh, okay. But once I saw that she wasn't the lead, I was like, she's going to (laughs) die. And she died. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) Yeah, this is, as per usual, we don't really do too many spoiler-free things. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Especially, well, this one's already been out now for several months. So, you know, chances are you've either probably already seen it and or you... We're going to be enticed to see about what we're telling you. So we're not going to give you too much that you don't know. But, you know, anytime you see a kind of a bigger name star in one of the movies, but they're like fourth build, you know they're not making it through the movie. Yeah. Or if you see Sean Bean in the movie, then it's immediately, you know, he's going to die. Yeah, Sean Bean, I'm like, he's dead. Don't even invest in anything in that guy because it's just he's going to end up dying within some part of the movie. 20 minutes, two minutes. It'd be great if they just had one where he just walked on screen and they just shot him immediately, like Naked Gun (laughs) style. They're like, special guest star, Sean Bean, and someone just shoots him. Yeah, or they're like, you know what, we're going to change this shit up. He's going to fucking survive the movie. I think he's done that once. Well, the Hitcher, he survived, but he was a bad guy all the way to the end. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Yeah, so he lives when he's the bad guy, apparently, or lives longer. Yeah, he lives longer. So the yeah, so it's a mis- a mixed cast of unknown and familiar faces. They each have to go into a room. If you've seen enough movies, you can really get the gist of it more or less within a certain time frame that each of these people have been through something. Either they did something bad in their life and this is kind of like payback, saw like, or the opposite something bad happened to them and somehow they still survived and they want to see if they if their luck holds out yeah and it was the latter half each of these people were sole survivors with the exception of one person that person actually turned out to be a killer yeah and then each of the rooms was kind of geared towards one of them and then you had to kind of figure out what room was geared towards who because each one was kind of themed along the lines of something that had happened to one of them, but you weren't sure what it was yet. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, and I like that the fact that they didn't have the person that survived the incident survive their own room. 
Yeah. A lot of them actually died in their own rooms because they were so, like, traumatized. I think two of them. Definitely um, the fat guy. <laughs> I hate to say the fat guy. Oh, Tucker and Dale. And Tyler Levine. He died in his room. And the other kid, the car- kid died of the carbon monoxide. Mm, no. The kid that was exposed to the carbon monoxide died a different way. Oh, he died in the ice. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that to spoil it any more than we already had. But... No, it, we already we already threw that shit out the window. This is not a spoiler-free podcast. It's okay. not. It's going to be full of spoilers. Like you said, the movie's been out for some time, so watch the movie. We won't give anything else away. There you go. But it does take a lot of twists and turns. They're interesting. Um, it is kind of a like some. You see some of these movies, some of these horror movies, and they're pretty. This one's good. It's tense. It has a lot of like. You're kind of like, ooh, ooh, that's painful. And that's, but it's not excessively, well, it's not really gory at all. So I kind of like these are, to me, these are kind of like primer horror movies. These are for people that are just starting to get into horror movies. And they're like, I don't know about all that blood and guts. And, oh, well, watch this one. It's pretty good. It'll you know, lean you into it. And then you kind of move them up the line of horror movies. <laughs> like, now watch Cube. <laughs> and then it goes up from there. Yeah, I while I was watching the film, I was like, I would not have survived any of these rooms. We'd both be dead. Oh, yeah, I'd be dead immediately. They'd be like, oh, you need to do a pull-up to get out of here? <laughs> just, I'm dead now. Yeah, just, I'm. there's no way I'm going to survive. I think I'm, you know, pretty smart to some regard, but th- these rooms were just really intense. They were really intricate. They're, you know, there's riddles galore. It was really interesting to see how... You know, you had to, it was like about teamwork and, you know, like getting through what, whatever the trauma is for that person that that room had to deal with because they didn't right off the bat know, oh, this is the experience that I had this one time, like X amount of years ago. It wasn't until they saw like there were certain triggers within the environments that set the characters off. So that was pretty cool. I really like the, I really like the whole like riddle thing it's very ooh to me intriguing and how different the rooms were it wasn't like now i liked that movie cube but each room they went into was the same set over and over again basically just kind of slightly redressed this one they went to a completely different room every time it was decorated completely different you could tell that they had put a little bit of money into making the room you know yeah it was there was one room where you're like oh am i outside but were they outside? It was pretty good effect. It actually reminded me of that um, Cabin Fever. Cabin, in, Cabin the woods. in the Woods. Yeah, Cabin in the Woods. I've never even seen Cabin Fever. I don't know what it is with that film. But every time I think of Cabin... In the Woods. Fever, I'm thinking about Cabin in the Woods. Because oh. I want it to... I'm like Cabin. That's all I, I'm getting is that part of the film. But yeah, and then, you know, there's like I said, there's the one where they're kind of outside. It's a little reminiscent of Cabin in the Woods. Uh, there's an upside down room. There's, that room was pretty cool. All the rooms were awesome. There's a room that looks like it came straight out of Saw. Definitely, these are not rooms that you're going to find in your local escape room. I'm sure that they're pretty cool, but not as amazing as these were. These were just like next level cool AF. Yeah, this is, uh, you're not going to find this just in that random hotel off the interstate. (laughs) And, you know, there was definitely, there was character development, which I like to see in, you know, a horror film. Um, This one wasn't really, like you said, it was like an intro, it was like a little appetizer to horror. It wasn't really, there was not gore, not that I think that that is what makes a horror film. No, no, just, you know. But... Yeah, there there wasn't much of that at a lot of that. There were kills, uh, but they weren't dramatically gory and just like, oh my goodness, they were un- in- unfortunate and yeah. people died. And they kind of, they made you where you cared about all the people. You know, a lot of the Saw movies, you only see the person for like 30 seconds and they're like, they tell you, oh, this person did something terrible and now they're going to have to rip off their own nose to pay for it. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. But this time you got to know all of them and you got to, you know, you really cared about what happened to them. You're like, oh, well, this person didn't really do anything that bad. They just were fortunate enough to survive something. 
So there was a mixed bag of them. Some of them, like you said, just survived, and then others of them did something terrible, you know? Yeah, it was definitely a mix of people, and you had to, like, really choose, like, oh, you know, who's going to survive? You're playing the game of, like, who's going to survive this room? You know, who's going to get the clue? You know, all that kind of thing. So you're kind of, like, on the edge of your seat. I would say it was probably more a suspense thriller. Yeah. I put it in with the horror genre just because, you know, there's more of the different subgenres. I'd say it's kind of a, but yeah, it is a little bit heavy on the suspense. It's a pretty solid film for someone's like second or third film. Yeah. So I really look forward to seeing anything, um, to seeing more from uh, Adam Robitaille. Yeah. And, you know, when I see his name, usually I don't really memorize directors' names. I've kind of just like blah because no one really stands out to me a lot of the times. But definitely, I would watch another film by him. Yeah, uh, he's got a. I don't know. Like I, when first time I saw the Taking of Deborah Logan, that that's not your typical found footage movie. No, it's not. I didn't even I just stumbled up across it on Netflix and I was just like fine I'll just watch it because I'm not really open to like new horror films no. that come up <laughs> that come up so I was like fine and then I was like oh shit this shit is fucking creepy and it was just done so well because it's like we're going into one thing and it's a completely other thing and I know we shouldn't talk about it because you know this is not the taking of Deborah Logan podcast moment but it's definitely a really good film if you have not seen it i'm sure you've seen the meme millions of times from a certain scene from the film yeah that's what i saw and then i was like oh what the hell is this and then i went and watched the movie which i didn't really know that was a spoiler at the time i just thought that was a random thing that happened you know yeah but if you've seen the movie then you know we're talking about but, you know, go definitely see the film. We give it three knives. Oh, I give it three knives. Yeah, me too. And we saw it via Fandango. You can rent films from their site. And yeah, it Fandango was now. five bucks. And well, well, well worth it, except we actually got it for free because I had a coupon from drinking tons of Dr. Pepper. Yeah, Dr. Pepper, please sponsor us so we can de- get delicious Dr. <laughs> Peppers all the time. I went on a crazy, massive search for the berry, dark berry Dr. Pepper that came out for the Spider-Man 2 uh, film. And those had been released maybe like a month, two months ago. And like before the film came out, obviously, it, hasn't, it just came out. And uh, they were nowhere to be found. I had to, like, travel many a store around many, uh, two different counties, to be exact. She rescued them and brought them all home. And I drank Darkberry Dr. Pepper for two solid weeks. Yeah. So that's how we obtained the uh, credit for the Fandango Now. If you haven't seen it, they have some pretty good movies. They just actually uploaded the new Pet Cemetery. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that, please watch the original and then watch that one. Or I'm curious you know. to see it because I, I kind of I want to see it just because I've heard it's I've heard mixed on it. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I already hate it. I hated it as soon as you mentioned they were making the movie, and then <laughs> someone that I some one of my friends saw the movie and I just told her just tell me everything that happens in the movie she told me and I was like that sounds really terrible so I don't know I'm not I'm not I'm not about it right now I'm totally against it which is why we have not seen it yeah. hint hint yeah well spoiler alert we'll get around to it the next film that we saw oh god now we like to as you may or may not know if you're joining us for the first time uh we usually don't do new films we kind of like just go around the whole genre as a whole within tv uh films things that are going on locally we talk about things you know as they come and we went out of our way we go out of our way to find films that we've never seen um and this film we I stumbled across and I was like we have to see this movie. It has like I have an amazing to see it. cover, amazing cover. And you look about it and it's like oh this is a movie that may have inspired Nightmare on Elm Street with its dream stalking killer. We're like oh okay, 
Yeah, we got to see that. That's what's going on with that. Okay, so we're talking about 1982, The Slayer. What you're about to see may shock you. It may frighten you more than you've ever been frightened before. Don't worry. It's only a maddening, horrifying nightmare. Or is it? What are you going to do? Fire some flares. Did you give her the pills like I told you? No. Maybe it's not a nightmare after all. There's nothing up here. Are they really alone? Or is there an unwelcome guest? Is this a nightmare? Or is it the fear we all have when we're alone in the dark? And if it's only a nightmare, why is everybody dead? Prepare yourself. Because you will never want to be alone again. Prepare yourself for The Slayer. Now, this is one of those movies that has an amazing poster. And you look at it and go, wow, that is really cool. I can't wait to watch that. And then you watch the movie. And both of us had to take like a coffee IV in order to stay awake for this thing. It and is, it, and we failed. We fell asleep during the movie. It was so boring, and had to actually start it back over and finish it the next day. It is the worst movie. I mean, it, it's pretty bad. But let me go out and just say this: I have the same feeling for another film that people love, and that's Carnival of Souls. I despise that movie. I mean, uh, if I have been shunned. Away from listen, you listening to our uh, podcasts from this point forward. I'm sorry that we lost you. But I am not a fan of this film. I despise this film. And it had like the same... Like nothing happens. There's things happening, but it's just people walking around. But nothing is really happening. So here's the plot of the movie. The first couple, uh, one of them, the wife is an artist. She's very stressed because she has a big show coming up. Like every artist in every horror movie, they always have a big show coming up that they've got to prepare for. So they decide they're going to join her brother and his wife on a little retreat out to an island. They go to an island, apparently in winter time, and it's very cold. So they're going to stay in the house, which is a large, creepy house. And the artist begins having these strange dreams that people are going to die. And you're like, okay, okay, you know, it's still only a couple minutes in. This is the setup. Things are going to happen. But no, nothing happens. Oh, there's some kills in it, but they're so far apart that by the time it happens, you just don't care anymore. 90% of the movie is people walking around on the island going, David, 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 are you there? David. David, I know this is a giant empty field and I'm standing on top of a hill looking down at it, but I'm going to yell, David, are you there? Someone looks in the cabinet. There was a point where one of the, one of the girls <laughs> looks in the cabinet and I was like, D- David, D- David, are you in there? Are you in there, David? That's, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. That's at least 20 minutes of the movie. It's just people walking around, calling each other's names. And then after they find David... Then they just start walking around. Eric? Eric? Eric. Eric, where are you at? Eric? Eric. That's it. That was the whole film. Who who the Slayer is? We don't know. We never find out. Who's... We we never found out what the hell was going on. We never found out why she was having the dreams. They they randomly mention, like, near the end of it, like, the brother says, oh, don't trust my sister. One time, she got a cat for Christmas, and she killed it. No, no, no. No, no, no. They didn't say she... He didn't say she killed it. They said they found it the next morning and it was like in the freezer. Yeah. Something weird. And then she told her parents that she dreamed that that happened. And like she dreamt that that, that the cat was going to be murdered. And then it did. So after... And she spent some time at the psychiatric ward. Let's yes. throw that out there. Where she started drawing. Just kidding. I don't know if that part does. I'm sure that's true. probably what's in there. 
Uh, so the movie progresses, goes along, and the Slayer appears. Suddenly, he's not in dreams anymore, which he wasn't all along because he was out killing people on the island, we assume. But wasn't he in the dreams? Now, was everyone asleep or he was killing the people? There, You really don't know what the fuck is going on. It's like, is this? did he pop out of the dreams? Like, did someone pull him out like Freddy style where they pulled him out of the dream and now he's in real life? Or was he... Is the whole thing a dream? But obviously, in the end, I guess. Well, in the end... We'll, we'll the, get to that. We'll get to that. So, you know, eventually it comes down to just the artist woman is left. She's nailing herself up in the house. We get a very long scene, maybe 10 minutes of her just going around, closing shutters, pushing furniture in front of all the doors, locking the windows, smoking. She smokes a lot. She does smoke a lot, like a fucking chimney. And she has crazy wild hair again, guys. I chose another film where the woman has like wild, like lion hair. And she looks insane because she hasn't slept in like God knows, you know, how long she hasn't slept. And then there's like the ultimate fight scene, which you would think would be like a struggle scene, but it's not. He bursts through the door and he looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a cool mask and cool prosthetics. Yeah, a.k.a. the Slayer. And he's like, ah. And then there's a scream. And then there's a pullback. Uh, the camera pulls back from the house. And you just hear commotion. And then all of a sudden, you're like, people are waking someone up. And it's, I don't know where they found this kid, but she looks exactly like the main actress playing the artist. I think they just cloned her. And that was like... Like how long it took to film. And then her brother pops in as a kid, and it's like, oh, she's waking up back when she was a kid. And they're like, hey. It's Christmas morning. It's- Come open the presents. And here's your cat. Cat. And she's like, ah! and Freeze the movie frame, end. ends. What the fuck was that? Yeah, this movie didn't inspire shit. The only way that they saw it, that anyone was inspired by that was they were inspired to be a better filmmaker after they saw it. I'm going to tell you what inspired them. The smoking scene where she takes the cigarette and burns it into her hand. Obviously, that happens in Nightmare on Elm Street. Drinking the straight black coffee. Drinking the straight black coffee. She even's like she even says like I have to stay awake. I have to stay awake. Like she's like muttering that to herself. The black crazy the crazy hair like Nancy style when she's wild and like the black under the eyes. There were some things, those those were the main things in the film that, okay, okay, we obviously, we have seen this in Nightmare on Elm Street, but yeah, that day, everything else, we all know that Nightmare on Elm Street was inspired by that, those Asian yeah. stories. But this, this was, yeah, that was the end of the inspirations for Nightmare on Elm Street. This was a terrible movie. And then you find out like, oh, the writer, director of this was the guy who, he did a pretty decent horror movie that I did like that was, came out in the 90s called The Forsaken, a vampire movie. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's like four stars, but it's one of those ones. When you watch it for free, it's like, okay, that was pretty good. Is Brandon Fair in there from Roswell? Yes. Yeah, okay. I've never seen it, but I've seen the cover enough times. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, It's a kid that has to, he's supposed to be driving a car, like delivering a car across country. He gets into an accident and doesn't have the money to fix the car. So he knows when they deliver it, they're going to take that out of his salary or not pay him at all. The character from Roswell shows up and says, hey, I have money. I need a ride. I'll pay to get the car fixed, but you've got to drive me to these places along the way. And along the way, they find out he's on the way to kill vampires. Interesting. It's not bad. I mean, it's a it's very 90-ish kind of movie when you see it. There's a lot of the fast cuts and all that kind of stuff. And it's not bad. It's not anything that breaks new ground, but... I just thought, like, hey, at least they gave the kid a reason to pick up the strange guy on that was just hanging around the bus stop, you know? Yeah. Instead of just like, oh, what the hell, get in the car. Chad, can I ask you something? Yes. Was the movie not bad? It was not bad. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. But it wasn't great either. Well. Just checking. I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, watch, we'll watch that, and we will not discuss it at a later date. Okay. Uh, he also wrote The Covenant from 2006. I you you're looking at me with your twinkly eyes and your like I'm smiley sure you've face. Seen that movie. I've never seen this fucking movie. This is the second yes, time you've you mentioned it. No, I have not. It's the one about the. It's like the guys are all witches at the special. They're all witches at the school. And it's you like mean warlocks? Warlocks, witches. No, whatever. those are no. There's not. It's not whatever. It's warlocks for the men and witches for the women. Yeah, it's like they took Harry Potter and said, "Hey." 
if Harry Potter had abs that went all the way down to his knees, could we just have him shirtless all the time, casting spells? It's You would love it. It's so ridiculous. That sounds right up my fucking alley. But it it's, also sounds like magicians. There's some good-looking people on that show. Yeah, this one... Yeah. Wow, the, your face is just... I need to see this movie immediately. Yeah, it's one of those so bad it's good kind of things. Like They're literally like, hey, let's go out and just go hanging out at the cemetery. Maybe cast a few spells. Talk about werewolves. Oh my god, stop. So <laughs> he did this film and the Forsaken one. And did he do anything else, or were was that his like glory? That seems to be about it that I could find that was of any note. Yeah, because both films, I'm not gonna lie, they kind of sound lackluster, and they're really far apart. So he's probably like paying, like getting the money himself. Yeah, he's one of those guys that just shows up about every ten years and makes a movie, and then it doesn't do well, and they go, yeah, "Come back in another ten years and try again." Yeah, that's exactly try, try again. That's exactly what happened. So yeah, the Slayer is terrible Do i would not- give it a negative knife i'd actually take one knife away from it and call it negative one i would take the one knife and then i would stab all the other knives with it <laughs> and then i would break the handle off that knife and throw it into the ocean yeah i can't the only movie that's worse than this is doom asylum i've never seen that movie but i'm gonna one up on you the only movie that's worse than this is blood rain uh i don't know at least blood rain You stay awake during it. No. Did you stay awake all the way through Blood Rain? First of all, I was in a theater when I saw it. So, yes, you stayed awake. Yes, I stayed awake. Could not stay awake through the Slayer because nothing happens. It's like an ASMR, like putting you slowly to sleep. It's like, go to sleep. Maybe there'll be a murder. Maybe there won't. I don't know. Wow. And just lulls you to sleep. And all of a sudden you wake up and it's the next day. You're like, oh, I feel good. Not because of the movie, but just because I got a good solid night's sleep. Wow. I thought you were going to say it was like, Eric, David, <laughs> David. And that's and how I have those names burned in my brain forever. Yeah. And also the background of like the waves crashing because they were on the, you know, they were on like the beach. So. Oh, and we also forgot to mention in this movie, there's the four characters. That's the only ones you see. And then like randomly, like 20 minutes in, there's just an old man fishing on this island for no reason. The killer just walks up and beats him to death with an oar and then just walks on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did she dream about the old man that was fishing that randomly needed to die? No. They literally just were like, ooh, we need another death scene in this movie. We got to throw an old man in there to kill. How did the little girl come up with, see her as an adult, create adult friends and to create an old man like what kind of imagination does this fucking kid have like like are these just people that she saw on a soap opera is is it like a dorothy wizard of oz thing is she, she the killer the whole time i thought they were gonna go that route like oh she was in the insane asylum oh she's an artist you know and then you look back in her fucking notebook and she has like all the murders like pre- she's been writing all work and no play makes jill a dull girl <laughs> all through the notebook and just drawing the, like little stabby hands when they actually show her art it's just terrible like a little kid's art just like a black crayon hand with a red knife just stabbing over and over <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what it is. So on this one, uh, go see Escape Room. Do not see The Slayer. Even for free, we watch this. Which I have to say, we have an app on the uh, PlayStation 4 called Tubi. And they have a lot of really decent horror movies on there in terms of uh, quantity. They probably have 800 different horror movies you can choose from. And it goes all the way from the terrible, terrible Charles Band full moon features... Uh, there's a lot of stuff from Shout Factory and Scream Factory on there. There's a lot of the Arrow video. The Slayer is actually put out by Arrow Video. so And so is Doom Asylum. And they're on there. Why? Yeah. Is what I would have to ask those companies. Why? Obviously, there's a cult following. following. And then, I mean, the cover to that is just so badass. I hate when they lure you in with the cover. And then it's just like the cover was the best thing about this fucking movie. Well, a lot of these deals, too, are probably like hey, if you want to get this really good movie, you also have to buy these two shitty ones and put them out because no one's done anything with the rights to these for a long time and we need to make some money off of them. This is true. We do not forgive you, though. We actually hate you and for re-putting this out into the world 
whoever that was. Yeah, this one movie should have been forgotten. And I'm going to take the Slayer and put it in the deep, darkest corners of my mind and forget about it. Don't forget, because someday you might start watching it again, and then you'll have like the flashbacks, and you'll just start screaming, Eric, David, Eric, David, and no one will know what's going on. Yeah, really bad. Like, the knife is floating down into the bottom of the ocean at this point yeah. for me. It's gone. Do not see this film. Uh, or see the film and then let us know, do you share our thoughts yeah. about the film? Yeah, if you want to watch this movie just to see if, you know, prove us wrong, tell us why this is a good movie. Tell us why it's a good movie, but you also, I dare you to not be intoxicated <laughs> while you're watching the film. Because I feel like if, if I had some kind of enhancement in any which way, the movie was probably going to be like the best fucking movie ever. I was going to be immersed in like the, the suspense and the thriller of them running around an island, screaming people's names out. There's a one murder or two happening. And then there's a black cat in the end. It might be, it might literally be like the best movie ever. If when I had, high. you know, I mean, damn, when I'm high, maybe I'm drinking. There's other... I'm just throwing things out there. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, for someone that doesn't do any of that kind of stuff, you just went to like, oh, and you're high. Excuse me. I could be drinking some Pat's Ribbon beer. Delicious what? and cool. No, I just said, <laughs> I mean, you as in people watching it, not you personally. Oh, okay. Jump to conclusions. Then. Yeah, I was like, it's a personal attack. <laughs> So thank you for joining us once again on our podcast, Jump Scare, in case you forgot the name, and watch Escape Room. It's on Fandango now for four ninety nine. More than likely, it's probably in the red box yeah, for like $0.99. Cents. But we decided to just not leave the confines of our home because we're lazy and we didn't want to save the four dollars, so we just decided to pay five dollars, and it was worth the five dollars. Yeah, I I really enjoyed the film. All right, we will be back uh, soon. We're going to be back with a special bonus episode. Uh, we're going to go see Crawl because it's mandatory if you live in Florida. You have to go see every movie about alligators. Yes, especially if it's in Florida, and we have so many criticisms already just by watching the trailer. So, yeah, stay tuned for that later on this week. Thank you once again, and stay tuned to the horror. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. Good night.